So Paul, you said that you know when we look at some of the spiral bits of this galaxy or even the bar, a lot of it has to do with how the stars are actually moving. So how are the stars moving in our galaxy? Well, we can actually see them moving. Okay. Um, now, of course, the night sky, the stars move all the time, but that's just because the Earth is rotating. Right. But if you look over a long period of time, like decades or yep. hundreds of years, and we've got hundreds of years worth of photographic that's plates right. of some parts of the sky, you can see that the constellations don't quite keep their exact shape. They actually... slightly just change in their structure. So, so when we see the stars as we see them now, we can kind of trace back that they may not and definitely have not looked like that position on the sky. Yes, and the Gaia spacecraft, by making very precise measurements for what is about five years now, yep. uh, can actually plot how these things are moving. It's only got five years of period, but it's very precise yes. measurements. And so this is showing the, very, the motion of the stars over the next you know, many thousands of years. Yeah, we're not talking about something that's going to happen overnight, right? This is the period that happens thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. But they do move. That's right. I mean, so if you go back to like uh, Roman times or Han Dynasty times, the stars would probably not be noticeably different from today. Yeah. But if you're starting to go back like 100,000 years to the peak of the last ice age, the constellations would probably be fairly unrecognizable. That's right. And if you're looking back millions of years back to yeah. the age of the dinosaurs, then it's totally different. different. So if you're, I remember once being rung up by someone who's trying to do a dinosaur, saw an exhibit asking for what the stars would look like. We basically have no idea because yeah. they all have moved so far by that point. It'll be quite different stars at the moment, be halfway around the galaxy. Yeah. So we only really know kind of in that those tens of thousands of years what the stars are doing because over time they just move too much. That's right. And here's a simulation of what these motions okay. are actually like. And so there's kind of like three things. One is they're all rotating around the middle of the galaxy. Yeah, they're all spinning and they're all spinning around that same direction. Pretty much. Also, they're vibrating up and down, oscillating around. Because you said earlier that we're kind of in the middle, the sun's in the middle, so we're kind of seeing that we do go on this yep. almost roller coaster ride. Also, as they go around, they're not going around always at the same radius. They sometimes oscillate inwards and outwards a bit. Okay. And that would be much more dramatic in the middle where there's the bar. Yep. Um, so it takes about, for our own sun, about 220 million years to go all the way around. So we do a, a, a lap, so a year of our solar system around the galaxy yeah. is 220 million. So 220 million years ago, we were talking about when the dinosaurs were just emerging. So if we talk about 100 million years ago, we would have been on the opposite side of the Milky Way to where we are now. That's right. And the vertical oscillation has got a period of about 60 million years for our sun. Okay. And so that's, we've done one vertical oscillation since the dinosaurs were extinguished. So um, this is what's going on here. Now let's look at the stars near us. Okay. So here's the motions of the stars. So there's, there's no obvious clumps well, that look, we look see. At this, look at this. Can you see any patterns here? I see a few that are moving f a lot faster than the others. That's right. So most of the stars are wandering around at fairly slow speeds. Yeah, but there's a, there's a few ones that seem to be zipping, but they're also not zipping in one direction. And they're going, they tend to be red stars. They tend yes. to be old red stars. So it's a bit like we're standing around in a crowd and most of us are just sort of wandering around. Every now and then a sprinter goes through the middle of it. <laughs> and these stars form what's called the halo of our galaxy. Yep. So that is, we have this disk of stars, which is where most of the stars in our galaxy are. Yep. And this is quite thin, and they're all fairly sedate and moving around more or less in lockstep. But then you've got this halo, which is just like this brown fuzz further out. And this kind of goes all around the galaxy? Yes, and the stars in here are flying in and out. And so every now and then they zip, zip through the disk near us. So they're really, so they're essentially going cross and out, and then just for that very brief part of time, they pass through our disk. That's right, they go all sorts of directions. Some of them are going this way, some of them are going that way, some of them are going in and out. The ones that are just orbiting further out, we don't see. Yep. The ones we see are the ones that are zipping through. And we just see them briefly as they do their sprint through the crowd and concourse. So, so it's middle. very chaotic how they're moving. Almost. That's right. And so what's the, the, and they all tend to be old stars. Okay, so they're all these older, redder stars. That's right, because if they formed a long time ago, all the blue ones have long yep. since moved off the main sequence and died. So they're also smaller? Is that the idea? Not Less, well, no, the massive ones might have turned into black holes. We might okay. get black holes plunging through from these things. Okay, good to um, know. But we wouldn't see them. Yep. <laughs> but they're mostly what we're going to see are the stars that were formed many billions of yep. years ago, and they may be about the mass of the sun, and they've now swollen up to be red giants. Okay. Or they're still dwarfs, but if they're red giants, they're much easier to see. That's right. So where did they come from? Well, our normal idea is that when our galaxy was forming, mm -hmm. we had clouds of gas 
slowly raining down, turning into stars. And this is a simulation of the formation of our galaxy. Yep. And what you can see is it's not a... There's stuff just piling in, but there's also stuff kind of through, flying in and out. That's right, and this debris as it flies in and out, some of that will turn into stars, and those stars will oscillate in and out yep. and form a swarm of stars around it. Most of the stuff will form as gas and form a single disk in the middle. So essentially there's stuff that forms slow enough that it forms that disk, but if you have enough speed you're going to zip in and out. And as that gas is forming in and out, it forms these stars moving in and out? That's right. Um, so here's, we, we actually, with more recent mapping, have shown that this halo of the galaxy, originally it was thought to be just a diffuse, all directions yep. cloud, but it seems to mostly consist of a lot of strings. Okay, so instead of being fairly uniform like a cloud, it's really strings of these stars that come in and out, or all around? And what's probably happened is that um, in the outskirts of our galaxy, we also have these globular clusters, yes. we talked about them before, and these are like very mini galaxies. That's right. Our own galaxy has about 100,000 million stars in it, 10 to the 11 stars in it. These things are tiny with only 10 to the 6, only a million stars <laughs> yes, in them. Yes. Uh, well, that means you'd need uh, uh, nearly 100,000 uh -huh. yeah. of them to make up the whole galaxy. That's right. But these are kind of like microscopic galaxies, and they're beautiful things as well. Several of them are lovely sites <laughs> with small <laughs> binoculars or telescopes. That's right, they are a great uh, thing. And the idea is these and other sorts of dwarf galaxies could have been orbiting around our own galaxy, a much bigger okay. one. Yep. And they're getting torn apart, apart by the gravity and so, torn into strings. So, so the idea is as this very kind of baby or miniature galaxy comes in, the stuff that's easy to be pulled off via the gravity of the Milky Way is pulled off and we're just left with the center bits, these globular clusters? We might get the center bits left over. So, I mean, at least one globular cluster, Omega Centauri, is thought to be yep. the middle of what was originally a much bigger galaxy and most of it has been torn off into an enormous stream. Yep. Some of them will get torn to pieces altogether. And, and all so that's going to be left is a stream of stars. And these are what we call the halo stars. So these, so these streams are the result of what we think are dwarf or small or tiny galaxies getting too close to the Milky Way and the Milky Way ripping them apart. That's right.